Hi and welcome to day five of our seven day challenge and well done for being with me still, it's great. Okay, so let's start as we, as we do, or as we have done, lying on our backs on the mat. So just settling into the corpse pose, which is becoming increasingly familiar to you. And let's just be aware of the breath. So let's come into Ujjayi breath if we can, creating that audible sound to the breath. So breathing in and out through the nose and expanding into the rib cage as you can on that inhalation and releasing as much as you can on the exhalation. So creating that sound if you can. Just centering yourself, feeling the back of your body on the floor, feeling the breath as it enters and exits the nostrils. And then staying with the breath as we inhale the knees in towards the chest. So here we are in Appanasana again, one of my favourite poses for the benefits it provides. Now let's work with the neck a little today. So let's keep the chin drawing in towards the chest. Now if you have a dodgy neck, then just be particularly mindful of how you're moving your neck. But everyone should be mindful anyway, of course. But what we'll do if we can is take our inhalation and exhale, bring the nose towards the knees. And then without dropping the head back, so keep control as you inhale the head back down onto the mat, back of the neck long. And exhale, lifting nose towards the knees. Inhaling the head back down. And then exhale, lifting up. And then we'll keep the head lifted as we can, or if we can, I should say, as we take an inhalation and exhale, let's turn the head to the right. Inhale to the centre and exhale to your left. Inhale to your center, exhale to your right. Inhale to the center, exhale to the left. Inhale to the center and exhale, release the head back down onto the mat. So it should sort of strengthen the front of the neck here. It can be, can be quite useful in releasing tension at the back of the neck as well. So let's cross the ankles, reach for the feet. Let's change the cross to our natural cross, however, before we get too in our habits. Let's take an inhalation and exhale, bring ourselves all the way up from there. So just sitting as comfortably as possible. Let's just take the left hand to the left side of the mat, right hand above that left ear, drop the left shoulder down, take an inhalation and exhale. Let's guide that right ear down towards the right shoulder. Just feeling some tension possibly. You can certainly feel the tension today through the left side of the neck. It's my dodgy posture when feeding my son and also when sitting at a desk. You think I'd know better. Okay, let's take an inhalation. Let's lift the head back to the starting position and exhale that right hand down. Let's take the left hand above that right ear, take an inhalation. And let's exhale, guide that left ear down, dropping the right shoulder down onto the mat. Well, not towards the mat, that would be very clever if you did. Also towards that left shoulder. And again, feeling possibly some tension through the side of the neck here. Lovely. And then we'll take an inhalation and exhale, release back to centre. Releasing the hands down, let's turn the head towards the right. Let's take an inhalation here and then on the exhalation, chin down from right to left, inhaling at the left side and exhaling down all the way to the right. Inhaling here and exhale all the way around to the left. Inhaling here and exhale all the way around towards the right. Let's do that again actually, inhaling and exhaling. Whenever I do it, I'm reminded I should do it every day. Inhaling and exhaling back to the right. And then let's release from there. Okay, we're gonna come all the way over onto all fours. And actually we're gonna start by bringing the forearms down onto the mat today. So let's have the forearms on the mat with the elbows underneath the shoulders. 
and the elbow shoulder distance apart and the hand shoulder distance apart. And let's try and draw the shoulder blades apart from one another to encourage the elbows to stay shoulder distance apart. So it might be they're out here initially. That's fine, just working them in towards one another. Tuck the toes under from here. Let's take an inhalation, press into the forearms and on the exhalation, lift the knees. So it's downward facing dog on the forearms, keeping the elbows drawing in. And let's really press the forearms down and create some space then between the shoulder blades. Shoulders away from the ears, breathe into this particular part of the body. The tummy is active here, sitting bones lifted. And then on the exhalation, let's release the knees down onto the mat from here. And let's bring the hands back so the hands or the wrist joints are just slightly forward of the shoulder joints. Let's just take a few rounds of cat-cow. So on the inhalation, lifting through the chin here. And then on the exhalation, rounding the back, chin towards the chest. So just finding this movement through the neck as you inhale, lifting the chin. And then exhale, chin towards the chest, rounding. Good, and then just inhaling back to the starting position. Let's bring the sitting bones towards the heels. Extend the hands forward from there. Come back up onto your knees, tuck the toes under. Inhaling the knees away from the mat, exhaling heels towards the floor. And then inhale forward into plank pose, lift the breastbone. And on the exhalation, knees, chest, chin on the mat. Elbows in as you inhale, come through into baby cobra. Lower ribs on the mat, all ten toenails on the mat and exhaling downward facing dog. So increasing our strength again, let's inhale forward into plank, crown of the head forward, and exhale, knees, chest and chin down if you can, elbows in, pubic bone lifted before you inhale, slide through pubic bone on the mat, chest open, and exhaling downward facing dog. Okay, let's inhale, lift the head, and exhale, step the feet behind your wrists, so your feet are shoulder distance apart, Heels turned out, big toes turned in. Let the head drop down. Now I might encourage you to bend the knees here so that you take the pressure off the backs of the legs and just lengthen through either, either side of the spine here, hands to the opposite elbows and then and the neck lengthening as well. So the head just dropping down towards the floor. Now you could of course straighten the legs if that feels okay for you to do so, but don't feel that you have to. And if it takes, um, to, if it's too, uncomfortable for you or if it causes any problems and obviously knees bend but breathe into the posture so allow the weight of the head and the arms to lengthen or encourage a lengthening through the back body and then change the cross of your arms and hands so whichever hand is on top take it underneath and again let's just find that length down through the back body and probably I'm doing this right now, but let's try and find an even weight distribution through the feet. So ball a big toe, little toe, inner heel, now to heel. And then mindfully, we're gonna bend the knees, we're gonna press the feet down, and on an inhalation, we're gonna reach the hands out to the side as we start to lift the crown of the head all the way up towards the ceiling, hands to touch, maybe looking up if that's comfortable for your neck before exhaling, hands to the heart releasing the hands down. Okay, so today we're going to keep the right foot up front of the mat, we're going to step the left foot back and then let's turn the toes or the feet then to face the outer corners of the mat and then we'll see how we go. So this is our goddess pose. Probably I heard some of you sigh then. Okay, so knees above the ankles. Now if your knees are collapsing in then I suggest you bring your feet or turn the feet a little bit more in towards one another so the knees are kind of tracking the feet as much as possible good balance here involved as well and then we're going to kind of squat down in the pose as much as we can and bring the hands to the heart and lift the breastbone up lengthen through the crown of the head so let's just drop the buttocks down a little bit more press into the feet knees drawing apart from one another and then let's bring the hands onto the thighs here fingers pointing fingertips pointing down so this works into the upper back as much as anything else we'll take an inhalation on the exhalation we're going to twist to the right straightening that left arm as much as you can. Inhale to the centre and exhale, twist to your left. Inhaling to the centre and exhaling, you're going to love this, I'm sure. Inhaling to the centre and exhaling. One more each side, inhaling to the centre, let's exhale. Last one, inhaling and exhaling. Inhale to the centre and then with much relief I'm sure let's exhale straighten the legs. 
Turn the big toes in and heels out now. So we're coming to Prasarita Padottanasana. So let's raise the hands to shoulder height, thumbs turn down. Bring the hands together now if you can at the back of the body. Interlock the fingers, draw the shoulder blades together. Press the feet onto the mat, so lift through the inner arches. Take an inhalation and exhale. Let's lead with the heart, folding forehead towards, or crown of the head, I should say, towards the floor. And hands moving beyond your head. So keep pressing the feet down. Breathe into your heart space. Breathe up into the shoulders, into the neck. And let the hands move beyond your head, just dropping them with the out breath. If it's too strong, hands onto the mat as I'm demonstrating crown of the head forward, okay? So you have that option. But otherwise, just allowing, this is the C variation of the posture, allowing an opening into the shoulders and the heart here, lengthening into the backs of your legs, staying with the breath. Okay, and then on the inhalation, starting to lift the head away from the mat. And everyone exhaling the hands down onto the floor. From there, let's bend the knees and bring the heels in towards one another. Big toes in towards one another. Heels in towards one another. Toes in towards one another. Bending the knees, hands to the hips. And on an inhalation, oh, coming all the way up from there, releasing your hands down and pausing. Crown of head lifting towards the ceiling. Deep breath in and deep breath out. Okay, and then you might choose to turn towards the front of your mat and you'll stay facing you, however, so I'll stay facing to the side. Let's have a go at Garudasana. I feel under some pressure here because balancing is never easy on a carpet nor in front of a camera. But here we go. So let's bend the left knee, take the weight into the left foot, and it's important that you do bend that knee, no cheating. As you inhale the right foot up and wrap that right leg once or possibly twice, I've yet to see anyone do it three times, around that left leg, squeeze the legs together. Now you can keep your hands on the hips. You're trying to align the knees in the middle. You might bring your arms into the equation, in which case hands to the side, and you want to bring the left elbow on top of the right and wrap the arms around one another. Draw the elbows away from the chest and lift the elbows up. Ooh, got a bit of a wobble going on here. So this is Garudasana, the Tibetan eagle who rides the energy and never lands. So it's the non-landing eagle. So you've really got to try and find that energy, which is quite tricky because actually it's one of those poses that you often want to get out of as soon as you've gotten into. But squeeze the legs together. Ooh, and then let's take an inhalation and exhale. Release from the pose. Let's try the other side. So right foot flat to the mat, bending that right knee, keep the chest lifted and let's inhale that left leg up off the mat and wrap it once or twice around the right leg. Squeeze the legs together, lift the chest, arms to the side, right elbow on top of the left, wrap the arms around one another. Elbows away from the chest, lifting through the fingertips, shoulders down, breathing. Squeezing the legs together, crown of the head lifted towards the ceiling. Good, and then take an inhalation and exhale, release from there. Fabulous. Okay, so if you're not already facing the front of the mat, bring yourself to the front of the mat. Feet together, hands to the heart. Let's take an inhalation, reach the hands out to the side and up towards the ceiling. And exhale, floating, fingertips to touch the earth. Inhale, hands to the shins, extend the crown of the head forward. And exhale, step back into downward facing dog. And then we're going to inhale, lift the heels, and exhale, bring the knees down onto the mat. At which point, we're going to slip the left knee towards the hands and the left foot to the right side of the mat. And then we're going to slip the right knee behind the back of the left knee. And we're going to sit ourselves down into Gomakasana, cow's face pose, okay? So I actually might turn to face you so you can see a little bit more clearly. So, Left knee on top of right knee in theory. Now, sometimes this is not an impossible for some people. The pain is too great. So you might extend your right leg forward and come into Ardha Gomakasana, half Gomakasana. Okay, so half cow's face. I'm not the best demonstrator of this, I have to be honest. Because in theory, the tops of your feet should be flat to the mat as well, either side of the hips. But we do what we can. So from here, we might now take the hands to shoulder height. 
have the right thumb up, left thumb down, so right thumb up, left thumb down. We're going to inhale the right arm up, left arm down, and exhale, bring the hands towards one another using a strap if necessary, or just hold your top if you can't quite reach hands together. Right elbow towards the right side of your head, chest open, awareness of this moment. We might be grateful for this moment, for the releasing that may be occurring through the hips here. So say we hold on to all our emotions in our hips, don't they? So just feeling a release on each out breath, a lengthening through the crown of the head, releasing tension through the arms and the shoulders, carry the weight of the world over on our shoulders. Brilliant, okay. And then we'll take an inhalation, release the hands, and exhale, come all the way back from here. And then now we're in the position, we might just take the hands to the back of the body, and inhale, extend the legs, and then exhale, opposite. So, right knee on top of left knee this time, if necessary, extend that left leg forward. But otherwise, knees bent, and then sitting yourself down here. You can also sit up on a block, actually, sometimes that can help. And then if you're okay moving, sometimes people find, find this pose so uncomfortable that they can't do anything or even think about moving their arms or hands away from this position on top of the knees. But if you're happy to do so, hands out, left thumb up this time, right thumb down. So left thumb up, right thumb down, left arm up, right arm down. And let's, again, bring the hands together and squeeze this left elbow to the side of our head, settling the sitting bones down onto the floor staying steady with the breath, so feeling the breath expanding into the rib cage, drawing the lower ribs in if you can, just to support the lengthening through the arms, crown of head lifted towards the ceiling, allowing a release on the out breath, so really dropping the awareness into the breath, especially if you find this pose quite challenging. Well done, okay, and let's take an inhalation, let's release the hands and exhale, hands down onto the floor, hands to the back of the body, lean back and let's extend the legs, releasing the feet down onto the floor. And then from there, extend the legs out ahead of you. Sitting tall on the sitting bones, legs together. Let's bring the hands or the arms beside the ears, drop the shoulders down. Let's take an inhalation, breathe into the heart space and exhale, lead with the heart. So taking hold of your shins or your feet, it doesn't matter wherever you are, but try and keep the spine long, the back of the neck long as well, she says, lifting the chin. Okay, so we'll take an inhalation here, and on the exhalation, back of the neck long, Paschimottanasana, extending or lengthening through the whole spine here. Some of you forehead resting onto the shins, you might take your hands around the back of your feet. Keep the feet active though and breathe into the back of the body here. So again, it's another opportunity to breathe into the back of the heart space. It's also incredibly invaluable for the health of our internal organs. As I'm sure I've said before, the ancient yogis believe that disease began or begins in the digestive system. So this posture can really help to nourish and massage that area of the body, keeping the organs healthy can help to reduce excess fat around the organs as well, which is amazing when you think that we're not actually doing anything, apart from breathing. Okay, let's release any bind. Let's ground the legs back down, press them down onto the earth. Strong through your core if you can, as you inhale, lift the hands towards the ceiling. And exhale, bring the hands to the back of the body with the fingers pointing towards the buttocks, hands about shoulder distance apart. If that doesn't work for your shoulders or arms or hands, turn the hands in the opposite direction. Feet hip distance. Let's press the feet down onto the mat, shoulder blades drawing in towards one another. And let's take tabletop. So on an inhalation, press the feet down, the hands down, and press the knees forward. Look ahead, or if you can, look towards the ceiling. If that's too strong for the neck, do keep looking towards your knees. Okay, and just looking up otherwise towards the ceiling, pressing the hands down, feet down, lifting the buttocks up, knees forward, press the back of the shoulder blades into the back of the heart. Brilliant. And then on an exhalation, release the buttocks back down onto the mat. And then from there, maybe shuffling the buttocks towards the heels, hands out, take an inhalation, 
and exhale, use your core if you can to lower your weight down onto the floor. And then as we did yesterday, let's come into bridge pose. It's invaluable for the health of our thyroid gland actually as much as anything else. So really good for anyone with thyroid issues. So knees hip distance again, feet hip distance, big toes turned in, hands down, feet flat to the mat, pubic bone lifting towards the belly button. Let's take an inhalation and on an exhalation, let's unroll the spine away from the mat, lifting the hips towards the ceiling and bringing the hands together underneath the body here. Let's wiggle up onto the, as high up as we can, sorry, onto the shoulders here. So I'd suggest lifting one arm up, then the other, and draw the shoulder blades in towards one another, pressing the hands down. So you've still got that natural curvature to the back of the neck, so you're not really, you're not trying to flatten or squash the back of the neck onto the mat. So the chest moves towards the chin rather than the chin towards the chest. Just flooding the thyroid gland here, in theory, with some fresh blood. Nourishing that whole area of the body. So this area of the body, the throat, energy center, is for how we express ourselves in the world, our vocation, how we, how we live our truth, express our truth, I guess, communicate our truth, our authenticity. Okay, let's release on an exhalation, hands apart, and rolling the spine back down onto the earth. Certainly this is an area where we feel some vulnerability in the body as well. I always know I'm feeling a bit vulnerable, vulnerable when my neck goes out of alignment. As animals do when they're feeling vulnerable, they kind of draw their neck inwards towards into, the, into their main body. Okay, deep breath in, deep breath out. And then let's lengthen the left leg along the mat. Let's bring the right foot onto that left thigh, left hand to the outside of the right leg, right hand out at shoulder height. Let's take an inhalation and exhale. Let's take the twisted position here, so universal twist. We might turn to rest the right ear on the mat if we can. So we're working into the neck as well, left shoulder away from the left ear. So as we all twist, ground that right shoulder down and breathe into it, so a deep breath in to create space. And then exhale, you can twist, in theory, into that space, so you're not forcing the twist. Twisting is so good for us on all those many different levels of our being, particularly energetically, actually, just helping to release little energetic blockages. Okay, let's take an inhalation to lengthen and then exhale, release back to the centre. Extend that right leg along the mat, and then let's bend the left knee and bring the left foot onto that right thigh, right hand to the outside of the left knee, left arm out of shoulder height. Let's take an inhalation, lengthen, and exhale the left knee to the right side of the mat, keeping that right, sh sorry, left shoulder down this time, and maybe turning the left ear onto the mat. So you're not just moving the eyes, but actually working into the neck, if that feels okay for you. Take an inhalation to lengthen here, and then exhale, releasing, coming all the way back to the centre. Let's release now that left leg along the mat. Inhale, both knees back in towards the chest. And as we began the practice, chin to the chest, stay here, or take an inhalation, exhale. Let's bring the nose towards the knees, continue breathing as you keep that nose, or your nose then, <laughs> lifted towards the knees. Lovely. And then we're going to release on an exhalation into the corpse pose. So shoulders down, back of neck long, feet apart, deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. And then two rounds of Brahmari breath, the bumblebee breath. So we breathe in through the nose and then we're going to hum, hum on the out breath. That's as easy as it gets. We'll do two of those before we relax. So we're going to breathe in through the nose.
Just noticing what's going on in your body. Some of you feeling the tangible energy in the body. Just seeing what's going on around the throat particularly. I encourage you to continue resting. And I thank you for sharing your practice with me today. Namaste.